Yeah, I'm Hallie Labonte, and this is Mega, coming to you from Twin Hills Community Church, where every single week we give our mega church a tiny family feel, introducing you to members of our church staff, people from our community, and I always think it's a treat, and I always think it's a treasure. Well, per usual, I'm joined by my co-host. He's the youth pastor for our high school ministry called Climax. Please welcome Gray Haas. What's up, Hallie? How are you? I'm so excited for our next guest. Ooh, our next guest is too blessed to be stressed and too anointed to be disappointed. Well, just like Jesus petitions on our behalf to the Father, our guest today is a super petitioner for Twin Hills. She runs our super pack. It is my pleasure to introduce Brenna Ziesman. How are you? Welcome to the program. It's so nice to be here. I love everything you guys do, and I'm so thrilled to be part of this community. Oh. Well, we feel the same way. You are one of the most important people keeping Twin Hills in power, you know, helping run the country. It's big time, baby. Stop. I couldn't do it without our donors. And I mean our financial donors, our other donors, organs, you know, all of our donors contribute so much to our community. (laughs) Well, uh, Brenna, I did want to just uh, first say congratulations because I did, you know, I get your emails where that, where you're always uh, sending out these great fundraising emails about the types of issues that we're contributing to. And it seems like this year we raised a lot of money for a lot of important Christian issues. And um, I'd love if you told us, you know, both how much money we raised and what kind of issues uh, we're really getting, what kind of stuff we're getting done in Congress. Congress uh, in the country right now. Great. Yes. I would love to tell you everything in excruciating detail. Uh, as you know, with our policy, we we don't disclose the actual financial earnings, but I can uh, say, okay. sure, sure, sure. you know, you're being cheeky, um, but it's a lot. And um, I'm very proud of what we've been able to accomplish this year Um, so much. I don't know if you've been following the news, but uh, we got we got some cool things passed legislatively. Yeah. Major (laughs) victories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Major, major victories for Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. And so. Lot, lots of really good stuff. Um, in terms of, you can guess how much money. I don't like to tell people, but if I have a couple of drinks, who knows? So, and I'm not drinking right now. But oh, um. oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so, I mean, I do want to give you a high five too because you got some awesome Supreme Court justices uh, seated, and I know that you know you were just saying like you know you send us ten bucks, we're gonna get your favorite justices in, and you did. You got some of our favorite ones in. I thought Kavanaugh mm-hmm. was awesome, and then we got Amy mm-hmm. Coney Barrett, and it was just, I mean, it just was really it was like slam dunk after slam dunk. It takes a village of super packs to pull that off, and. Uh... Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm still patting everyone on the back for that. It was hard with Kavanaugh too, with all the rape allegations, but we persevered and just threw money at the problem, and it yeah. and it worked. So it was cool. Isn't that awesome? I mean, it, th- that's truly, you know, Jesus, you, you, he did say a few problematic things about give away everything you have to the poor and all that. But um, I don't think he was talking about in these modern uh, days when we actually are going to have to use uh, the, the money of the rich and powerful people to remove people's rights um, to, to do things like murder. You know, like w- you don't have the right to murder and we're going to have to. To, um, legislate uh, all your uh, human rights away before we all take off and get raptured and get on out of here. <laughs> human wrongs, human wrongs. Uh, thank you, yeah, thank you. That's right. That's right. I, I've been, you know, I feel like, um, you know, Christians, we've had such a good year and then we just got slapped back in the midterms because the gosh darn liberals are so angry about, um, you know, uh, well, 
how loving we are in terms of, you know, trying to protect human life and, um, you know, just make people live by our standards, basically. And so they're real angry right now, but it's the same way. I mean, I've raised kids. They get so mad when you try to, you know, keep them on the straight and narrow because they don't realize it's for their own good. Um, do you have kids, Brenna? Um, that I know of. Yeah, I do. I, I do have one right now. Um, he is Aww. thankfully a boy. Um, and, uh, nice. yes. Good, good, good. Yeah. I would have not wanted a girl, you know, they just. Well, yeah, not. because a boy can be president. A boy can be mm-hmm. really anything. Um, you know, the, the men are in charge as it should be, you know, mm-hmm. and, um, boys are fun to raise. They're really fun to raise. Cause you know, they don't have a lot of the emotional problems and all that with a girl. Mm-hmm. They're going to cry with a boy. You can just be like, dry it up, shut up. Mm-hmm. You know, boys aren't mm-hmm. supposed to have feelings and it makes it way easier. I've found. How many how many boys do you have, Haley? Well, I only have, I have one boy and he's a teenager and Brenna, I'm going to be honest with you. These are some hard years. He's challenging uh, everything I've taught him. I've raised him with the, a good Bible knowledge and now he's using it against me, Brenna. He's, you know, uh, got all these ideas about, you know, loving and loving meaning being inclusive. He wants us to just mm. include everybody and anybody. He's getting poisoned by the liberals. He thinks that every American adult should be able to vote. And I'm like, honey, this is a democracy. And you'll learn in your political science classes that it's not every adult gets to vote. It's it's we want the right people to vote, you mm-hmm. know, and mm-hmm. that's hard for kids to wrap their heads around. But, you know, their skulls aren't completely hardened yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that makes sense. So what happened in the midterm? What What happened to the red wave? It just didn't seem like it came in. Well, I will say it's all part of God's plan. And we did get Marjorie Taylor Greene back in. So, you know, we had we have to celebrate the victories as they come in. Yep. Um, yep. I, I, I think that it uh, seems like the bad guys are winning, but they're not. You know, in many states, yeah. it's still really um, hard for harlots to kill their babies. So that's a victory for our church and for um, all us God-fearing folks. And, you know, I think uh, to answer you, the one antidote to the um, red drip is just more money. We just, I think we just need more money. I think that, I think people are having a hard time at the um, gas lines, gas pumps, gas stations. I don't know. I, I haven't, I don't drive, but um, I think people are, their pockets are hurting. So I hear, and um, they need to just suck it up and give more money to churches like ours so we can more effectively do our job. And our job is to help them live in a country that isn't all sinners. That's Speaking right. of Marjorie Taylor Greene, I saw you were posting a TikTok with it. That was awesome. So are you are you all friends? Yeah, we are. We met on a message board uh, for this guy named Q. And we hit it off right away. We're both white. We're both blonde-ish. We have a lot in common. Yeah, we're, we're gal pals. And were you posting that from a bowling alley? Yes. Yes, we bowl together now every Tuesday. Tuesdays with Maury. Well, you're not j- is our uh, coach, his name. That's our, oh, our coach, cool. his name, Maury. Yeah. And if I might offer you a, a word basket of encouragement, you and Marjorie Taylor Green aren't just... Um, you know, white, female, blondish humans. You're also massive intellectuals. 
uh, Thank you, you both, uh, you, you've got heads on your shoulders and your, um, your compelling, charismatic characters. And what's it like to hang out with her? What's her personality? Uh, you know, what are the things she likes to do? <laughs> She's a spicy cunt. I mean it in the most endearing terms. She likes to um, go to uh, those places that sell uh, dogs. They don't exist in liberal cities, but the, the boutiques that they sell the dogs in. She likes to go there and buy a dog and then return it. Um, and then you can't really return some of them after if they have like a broken leg. So then she gets a discount. That's like a... A Marjorie Taylor Green trick. She she buys dogs oh, from she... boutique dog salons, and she breaks their legs and brings them back and says that the leg was already broken, so that she gets a discount on the dog. And then she sells that dog. She nurses it back to health, and then sells it. And then that's how she makes money. Wow! Wow! wow. You know, I had heard something on Twitter or some such that she, you know, all those beagles that were found a few months ago that, you know, were some puppy mill or they were having experiments run on them. I heard that she adopted upwards of a thousand of those beagles and she just set them free. And I mm -hmm. think that's real Christ-like of her to just let them go in the wild. Little sweeties need a taste of freedom. That was her publicist. She's got an incredible publicist who really who really helps with her wonderful public image. And look, she's great. I'm just, she's my friend. If she were here, she'd be fine with me saying this. I'm just talking about how she is, you know, behind the scenes and she's great and she's yeah. smart. She's yeah. really great at business. She, I mean, who would have thought that you could make that much money off of injured Pomeranians that you injure and then resell genius. Well, I mean, I guess she isn't on a, a committee right now, so I think she's probably got time to think up creative hustles. Isn't yeah, that right? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. And Brenna, you had mentioned that you don't drive, and I wanted to tell you that I think it's so cool. I saw you in the driver's seat of that beautiful Ruby uh, ruby red Tesla that's self-driving, mm -hmm. and I was next to you at a stoplight. I couldn't get your attention but I looked in the front seat of your car and saw that you had a manicurist in there in the passenger seat, giving you a full on manicure on the way to work. She even had the little, you know, finger drying uh, mm -hmm. machine that you could put your hand in to get your gels, uh, you know, dry faster. And I just thought that was so cool. I said, that's a sign of a successful woman. Not only do you not have to drive, but you can multitask, right? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Yes. Um, that is Lilith, my manicurist who I travel with. Thank you. And I, I would drive, but I can't. I'm not legally allowed, but that's a whole nother story for another time. Um, thank you. Yeah. I mean, success is uh, who it's it shows up in all sorts of ways. But I, I, I'm glad that you clocked that. I worked really hard to have um, a manicurist in my car. So thanks. <laughs> so you can sit in the driver's seat of a Tesla as long as you're not, as long as it's on autopilot, you're, it's not considered driving. Well, someone else breathes into the, um, what's that called again? What's that called again? That thing. Oh, someone else does, thing? Lilith does that. Lilith does that. And, uh, so yeah, I oh, can I drive. see. What, and so what happened that you have to breathe into that? Do you have asthma or something? Mm hmm. Yeah, that's what it is. Well, if I might offer you some uh, encouragement, you know, there's no shame in not driving because not only is it a pain in the behind with traffic and whatnot, but you know what? Some of the greatest minds and most powerful people on the planet don't drive. You know, mm -hmm. look what happens when you become president. You get a driver. So it's mm -hmm. just a status symbol, really. And, you know, if you've had your license taken away or whatnot, um, you know what? That just frees your hands up for more prayer, mm -hmm. I say. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. You're exactly right. 
And, you know, you mentioned earlier or, or being an organ donor. Um, right. And, uh, yeah. How does oh, that I'm work? Not. Can you don- donate an organ? Oh, okay. Oh. No, no, no. Our church has an organ donor uh, beneficiary. It's part of our fundraising. It's one of, in our portfolio, I see. Uh, or, organs are, are we, we have a very diversified portfolio, our church, because you need a lot of different uh, financial instruments to really run a church as, as big as ours. And one of them is organ donating, donating, donating. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. So, so you can donate an organ and then you all somehow take that organ and monetize it somehow. Yes, basically. Yes. People, church per- parishion- parishioners, uh, will donate organs, typically kidneys because they can still also donate money after they donate a kidney. And um, we then donate with um, to to don to donors. We donate organs to people who donate money to the church, and it's kind of like a nonprofit for profit situation to raise funds for the church and, and give people organs at the same time. I just remember yes. you were really excited about the whole Citizens it. United thing because I remember at the bottom of your email, it says, you know, give $5 a month, $10 a month, give a kidney, give an organ. Like, I, I, I love all that, that. Give what you can. Yeah. Give what you can because that's really what it's about. We don't want to persecute people who can't afford to be members of the church. And, and you, can, you, can give, you can give so much more than money. That's the motto That's right. of our of our church. And that's cool my... because, you know, you hear, like, you know, donate canned goods to the food pantry. Donate your old clothes, you know, to the Christian organization, the Salvation Army. But I've never thought about going so far. I mean, you can donate blood. I do it all the time. You can donate plasma for money. But mm-hmm. I never thought about donating organs. That's real cool. That's, oh, yeah. you know, using what God gave you. And you save the life of the church by doing that which is bigger than the life of any individual. I mean, I this job, I used to work on Walla Street. And uh, I'll tell you, oh. this job is really, yeah, it's so much more emotionally satisfying um, than when I worked in finance. So, yeah, um, I'm, I'm glad that we're just able to make an impact because that's really what it's about. Wait, who did you work for when you worked on Walla Street? Um, I worked for Lehman Brothers. I worked for Cantor Fitzgerald. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the big ones, they the were, good ones. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then this thing happened on, I don't know if you've heard about what happened on 9-11, uh, 2007, but it was pretty bad and it got me soul searching uh, as to what I wanted to do. Um, and I decided I wanted to give back to the community. And so I left Wall Street and I joined the church. So what is that what they call 9-11-2 in the business world? Mm-hmm. 9-11, the squeak wall. It uh, didn't involve a terrorist attack. It just, I got dumped. I got dumped by my boyfriend who was my boss. And I was like, fuck this. And it happened on 9-11. Well, who doesn't love a sequel? Uh, Oh, okay. Well, I mean, IP is a huge thing. You know, everything has a a sequel. Everything's a reboot, a remake, you know? And so I just think that's awesome. Was your boyfriend one of the Lehman Brothers? Or who was your boyfriend? I didn't Mm -hmm. realize. Who's your boyfriend? It was a boutique firm that... It was Lehman, but not the Lehman you're thinking of. It was uh, Gary and Charles Lehman. They had an office on Wallace Street. It was W-A-L-L-A, not to be confused with Wall Street. But they had a little boutique finance firm, and I worked for them after college. And then it was so such a rat race. Um. That I, and then I got dumped. And then I was like, right, what is this world? And that's then I ended up finding Jesus and then fundraising for Jesus. And here we are now. And is that why you call is that why you call it the squeak wall? Because it was a rat race. Yep. Yeah. That's exactly why. 
Okay, so you were working for this, uh, you know, high power, or I guess mid to low power finance mm -hmm. place on Wallace Street, mm -hmm. and you're dating one of the brothers? Uh, mm -hmm. I, this is just fascinating to me, because, you know, I love movies like, um, you know, one of my favorite movies is Wolf of Wall Street. I love mm -hmm. uh, Margin Call. Uh, you know, some of those are just some of my favorite movies, because I always thought, you know, I'd be pretty good on Wall Street. Uh, what, what's it like when you're working in one of those firms and, you know, you're dating, you know, the main guy or guys or whatever? It's, um, sweaty because you're working oh. and you're working and you're working and you're having sex on all the equipment. Oh, whoa. Oh, no. And then did you find Christ after that? Mm, I found, I found Christ during and after yes after yes i had got it all out of my system and then i was at rock bottom and i walked by the church and i was so enamored with the community and i thought how can i help this community and i realized that the one thing i'm good at is raising money for other people and that's how i ended up working for this church. Oh, I love it. And were you at Rock Bottom Brewery or were you talking about the... Mm -hmm. this yeah, the Rock Bottom Brewery in, uh, on uh, Franklin, I believe. Yes, I, yeah. I, I, I oh, do drink. So I have had drinks before. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's interesting you mentioned the sex on all the equipment. And forgive me if this is too personal a question, but is that a thing on the stock exchange or these finance people you see? I've always wondered what's happening in that pit where everybody's down there and their, their arms are in the air and they're all crammed in and they're saying buy and sell. And I've always wondered what's happening, you know, below where you can see around their bathing suit area and their pants is, is what we're looking at an orgy, you know, with the these wicked financiers is is that what's happening when you see these wall street types sometimes absolutely that's what's happening i think it depends on the time of day it depends on whether oh. it's a bear market or a bull market How the market's doing mm -hmm. okay oh a bear market might mean that your bare bottom is out or some such yes. just asking for somebody to penetrate you or whatnot mm-hmm mm-hmm Wow. Wow. Yeah, it's it's wicked. It's wicked. But, you know, you talk about like raising money and in how you're so gifted in this area. And that's a gift that God gave you, I believe. And um, all of this finance and wealth, I just wanted to ask you, in your opinion, you know, Jesus was so vocal about, you know, how, you know, wealth is going to send us all straight to hell. But now we live in a modern age where we, the Christians, need to wield the wealth so that we can control everybody and, you know, hold them to the standard that we would like the entire planet to live by. And so how do you kind of square that with, you know, being a Christ follower and, and still being a wealthy person who wields a lot of, like, financial, you know, prowess. So Jesus was very into Reaganomics. He was very into trickle-down economics. He felt that a rising tide awesome. lifted all boats. And that's really what we try to awesome. do at our church. We try to give money to the people who have money, and then they, in turn, will help the poor. I think that that is very much in line with Jesus's core values. Jesus loved Reagan. Um, you can tell in the scriptures, mm -hmm. if you read closely enough, Mm -hmm. Jesus mm -hmm. was very much pro Reagan and Reagan's mm -hmm. he was policies are really the backbone of our current financial, uh, whatever. I think that's a definitely, term. I mean, Jesus was, <laughs> well, I'm glad because that's one I can understand and I don't understand most of that stuff. But yeah, I agree with you. Jesus was nothing if not a staunch late stage capitalist. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, 
a, a staunch late stage capitalist and an, and an authoritarian, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a strong man. And um, that's why we like these guys, uh, you know, you know, like Trump, you know, somebody who's going to say, like, I'm, I'm masculine. I'm, I'm a good business person. I mean, we've, we're now in the age where we need good business people like a Marjorie Taylor Greene and a Trump, these good business minds, you know, wielding the, the, the power at the top. Um, are you married? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What does he do? He also works at the church. We try to keep awesome. our relationship quiet, but if you want to take a guess as to who he is, I'm not going to say no. I cannot think of it. Um, let's see. Last name Ziesman. Mm -hmm. um, I know there are like seven really? Ziesmans at the church. But it's one of them. D oh, is oh, what, is it what, is it Charles Ziesman of the Ziesman brothers? Oh, <laughs> you got it. I have a type. Is it Charles? It's oh! Charles. Wow, he's so Ziesman. old. Yeah, I have a type. I like old brothers. I like old brothers. And. They have to have a sibling, huh? That's cool. They have to That's have a, a sibling. And um, That's my type. Well, I did I did want to ask what you thought about, uh, you know, we got some great news the other day, which is Trump said he was running again. And I think that is such great news. But, you know, we've also got such awesome, conservative, interesting uh, guys now in there. And, you know, one person that I think is really interesting and just as a person and personality is um is the guy from florida uh i really like desantis it just it just seems like he's got a lot going for him what do you think about uh, those two guys going head to head um i think ron desantis definitely has a funny sense of humor um putting uh vulnerable, uh, undocumented people on planes and sending them to hot spot vacation locations <laughs> like Martha's Vineyard. It's yeah, great. That's, yeah, that's great joke. awesome. Wasn't that hilarious? That was so great. It was so um, great. Yeah. He's got, he's got, it takes true courage and integrity. Yeah. 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 And creativity, real creativity. So I think, uh, I that's think right. he's great. I think Donald Trump, you know, is, Definitely um, who uh, God is rooting for. Um, maybe it'll be a Trump to Santa's ticket. It's really too soon to tell. Oh, wow. Do you think Trump would ever run with one of his sons on the ticket? I think that would be cool. Oh, wow. I don't think so. I, he has to like the person he's running with, and I don't, I don't see that happening. Mm. Oh, I see. Yeah, mm. he does seem like he mm -hmm. hates his sons. Well, Brenna, before we let you out of here, because I know you probably have Wall Street on the line and people need you to get back on the horn and do all your high powered stuff. But do you have any words of wisdom for Christians as we, you know, um, press on in these trying times where, you know, we're 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 really trying to commandeer the country in the correct direction and, and fight these liberals. Do you have any words of wisdom of, of how Christians can, you know, keep putting one foot in front of the other? I would just say when in doubt, give whatever that means to you. If it's money, if it's organs, if it's your time, it will make you feel better and it will help us. And that's really what it's about. Mm -hmm. And I'm noticing here, I actually just got a fundraising email from you that says, um, mm -hmm. help, exclamation point, exclamation mm -hmm. point, exclamation point. Antifa's in Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. um, so that's definitely making me think that I need to consider at least uh, giving a few dollars, if not, uh, you know, a non-essential organ. The the triple exclamation point says all Lilith. She's a Gen Zer. She uh, she writes the emails, but that's definitely a Lilith signature thing. The, my my manicurist is also my assistant. Um, so yeah, that was a Lilith email. But they'll they're they're going to be coming, especially with the election coming up. You're going to get a lot of emails from 
from us. I love it. I look forward to it.